Earlier this year, China's state TV network published this video. This isn't just fabricated government propaganda either. Numerous independent researchers, including Greenpeace, have confirmed that Beijing's air quality is improving dramatically. This is just one example of the incredible strides China is making in improving its environment. As the world's second biggest economy, policy decisions made in China can have far-reaching consequences, though. Their impact can reach people in countries from Australia to Zimbabwe. And in some cases, that's not a good thing. Some of China's efforts to improve their environment have led to the near collapse of America's recycling industry and resulted in illegal waste dumping all over Southeast Asia. So what happens when China decides that it no longer wants to be the world's most polluted country and makes what many consider to be one of the most important environmental policy changes of the 21st century? Last year, China made headlines around the world when it banned the import of scrap waste through a policy known as National Sword. Scrap waste is everything from used soda bottles to paper bags to dated computers. It's the stuff that Americans throw in the recycling bin and forget about. For growing countries like China, this material can be melted down or processed to make more stuff. That's why the multi-billion dollar global waste trade exists. At the time of this announcement, China was the biggest importer of scrap waste in the world. Collectively, China and Hong Kong have imported 72% of all plastic waste. When the policy took effect, people that were exporting their waste scrambled to find alternative destinations. At first, it appeared Vietnam, Malaysia, or Thailand would be that place. Unfortunately, these countries didn't have the waste management infrastructure to process that volume. Once scrap material is imported into a country, it needs to be shipped to a recycling plant that ideally has safety standards and environmental protections in place. These Southeast Asian countries had very little of that, though. Reports emerged that workers were melting plastic in factories with no ventilation, and tons of trash was being dumped illegally, wreaking havoc on local communities. In response to these reports, nearly every country followed China and instituted some kind of waste import ban of their own by that summer. With no one wanting the material, the price of plastic scrap plummeted. It's important to think about recyclables as commodities, as we would think of steel or oil or grain or anything else. And so a lot of these materials are valueless at the moment. That's Cole Rosengren, a senior editor for Waste Dive. He told me that cities that used to sell mixed paper for $30 to $60 per ton are now paying to get it hauled away. For cities in the U.S., that means recycling programs that were previously earning money are now losing it, in some cases to the tune of a couple million dollars. Good to keep in mind that at a national level in the U.S., it is not regulated, and so it is, it's a market-driven system. And so all of a sudden, it's gotten more expensive to move. That trickles down to the customer, be it a business, be it a city or a town. And the companies that do this work are saying, well, it's going to start to cost more. Or perhaps it has gotten so expensive that in some uh, still small but a growing number of cases, maybe we're going to cancel recycling service or maybe some of this material will not get recycled at all. Many of the people I spoke with for this video predict that it'll take years for the recycling industry to recover. In the meantime, Waste is going to be looking for what one expert described to me as the path of least resistance, a country that is willing to turn a blind eye to those reports of illegal dumping in order to boost their economy. In other words, the global waste trade won't cease to exist because of China's ban. Its environmental burdens will just shift to the next poor country willing to cut a deal for scrap material. 